so glad you're here this morning. I wanted to read some scripture over you this morning. Lift up your head, you gates. Be lifted up, you ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, you gates. Lift them up, you ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord Almighty, he is the King of glory. Thank you. 
All right. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, appreciate you being here. Usually we worship two or three songs in a row and you guys can get your worship out, but we got to hit the brakes, all right? Today's a special day. Uh, we are going to lift some kids up to the Lord, so I'm going to ask you to go ahead and grab a seat real fast. We have 20 children that are getting uh, dedicated to the Lord. Yes, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Uh, child dedication is something where it's not, hey, this is going to save your kid, but it's something it's, it's where we are going to lift these kids up and we're going to pray over them as a, as a church. So um, if you're dedicating your child today, if you can come up on stage here, yes, we're going to make you get on stage. So we're going to play a video and then have all of you guys come on up and then uh, we will pray over these kids. To soften my heart and break me apart, I need you to open my eyes and see that is shaping my what you say that your good and your love is great I'm broken inside I give you my life I need you to soften my heart, to break me apart. I need you to pierce through the dark and cleanse every part of me. All I am, I should. Trust what you say, that your good and your love is great. I'm broken inside. I keep All right. Woo. Praise God. Yes. Um, we'll see which uh, young one cries first. We'll see how this goes, right? So uh, something in the water around here, definitely we are growing the kingdom of God through having children, which is always a good thing. So um, really appreciate you guys, of course, being a part of this this morning. So uh, today what you're doing, you're dedicating, of course, these little ones, but we're also, we're also holding them high and we're making a dedication in our own heart to raise them in a way that will show them that our relationship with God, but also that we can set them up in the greatest way possible. Uh, to be able to connect with the Lord, hopefully soon, right? Um, and then through uh, Neo Kids, through you talking to them, through you praying over them, um, hopefully they'll be able to understand what having a relationship with Jesus Christ is truly all about. Um, a couple passages I'm going to read to you. I won't go long, I promise. I spoke long last message. I got it all out of me, so here we go. All right, um, Jeremiah 1.5, it says, I knew you before I formed you in your mother's womb. Before you were born, I set you apart. Every single one of these young children are, are set apart unto the Lord and created in his image, which is amazing. Uh, Psalm, uh, the psalmist says something very similar in Psalm 139, 13. He says, you make all the delicate inner parts of my body and knit me together in my mother's womb. Um, your children were no accident. Um, from conception, your son or daughter is who God made them to be. Special, unique, one of a kind, and set apart unto the Lord. Today we lift our children up to God, but we want to also pray uh, for you as the parents to raise them in a godly way and to be a great earthly example of how we can love the Lord while we are here. Many of us have heard that it takes a village to raise a child. I really do agree with this statement. A strong mother and father is important and can raise a child alone, but when you add layers of family, good godly friends and influences, and a church that loves and cares about them, that child has every opportunity to understand what God did for them and how to start that relationship with Jesus Christ, hopefully someday in the future. 
Um, Deuteronomy chapter uh, 6 is a great set of verses, and I think we can learn something from these verses today. He says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. These commandments that I give you today are to be upon your hearts. Impress them upon your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Tie them as a symbol on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. Any chance you can, any chance you can. You're talking, you're trying to get the truth inside these little ones. Soon the world's going to be screaming at them uh, things that, of course, that are not true. We really believe in this whole thing that's, it's about a village, but it really comes down, I'll be honest with you, you're number one in these little ones' lives. Um, as a church, we get your little ones for about 40 hours. If you come a lot, which I hope you do, right? Uh, we get your little ones for about four quality hour, 40 quality hours a year. Um, stats show, of course, you get them for 3,000 quality hours throughout the year. What you do at home is way more important than what we do, but we are partnering with you. I heard another stat that was very sobering between the years of zero and 18, uh, the time that you're able to spend with them, it's pretty much 90% of that. After that, it's 10%, right? And if you have boys, they don't even come home as much as girls. So hopefully uh, you get to see them after they turn 18. But while they're in your house, man, it's go time. It's work, right? We do everything we absolutely can. So today we're going to pray over them. So I, I encourage you to teach them, pray with them, read Bible stories, watch, you know, Veggie Tales or biblical whatever you can um, of course give them tons of hugs give them kisses go on trips together um, and of course allow them to see you just loving the Lord in your personal life as well and teaching them in that way so, uh, Proverbs 22 6 the last verse I'll read it says train up a child in the way he should go even when he is old he will not depart from it it's instilling that truth in them from very young and hopefully when they're older the world comes at them they'll be able to dig down and be able to pull out that truth so what I would like to do now is uh, let's see who you guys are and uh, who your little ones are and what you're going to do here today. And then uh, we will pray over you guys and we'll keep going. So we'll start over here with the Harbaugh's. Who are you guys? This is Randy and Stephanie, and we're, this is Elena and Autumn. Awesome. And um, what are, why are you here today? What are you doing? We're here to dedicate them to the Lord. Absolutely. Praise God. Praise God. All right. Don't have a cart with you. You don't have a little scooter. <laughs> no, I don't. So you hop all around. All right. Yeah. Introduce yourselves and uh, your family there. I'm Lorenza. This is Robert, Ezra, and my wife Carla. And we're here to dedicate both Ezra and Robert to the Lord. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. Thank you so much. All right. Pass it on down. All right. My name is Janelle Alvarado. I have Isaac and Elijah, and we're oh, here yeah. to dedicate them to the Lord. Awesome. Praise God. He wants to talk. <laughs> Watch out. <laughs> Hi, I'm James. This is this is Tiffany. Awesome. Jackson's mom. This is Jackson. <laughs> the born, born singer here, I guess. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah. Why? Yeah. Why are you? Uh, why do? You, why are you on stage today? Uh, here to dedicate Jackson to the Lord. Absolutely. Praise God. <laughs> he might be a singer. You never know. You never know. She's like, I'm not talking. <laughs> All right. Hi, I'm trying. This is Kim. And this is Jess, and we're here to dedicate her to the Lord today. Oh, praise God. Praise God. How's it going? <laughs> I'm Jonah. This is Brianna, and this is Liliana. Say hi. She might be a singer. It's very, very possible. It's very possible. She's a dancer. <laughs> a dancer, for sure. Uh, why are you guys here today? We're here to dedicate this little one. Oh, little praise one. God. Thank you so much. Hi, New York Church. <laughs> My name is Alan. This is Alan. This is Gabe. And this is Shiloh. Sorry, he's not easy to deal with. Uh, that's why he needs Jesus. Um, <laughs> but that was awesome. I'm here to show the church and just to bear witness um, for them and to you all that plan on dedicating their lives to the Lord. Absolutely. And that's why we're here. That's good stuff. All right, you can, uh, yeah, hand that, hand that uh, map behind you. There we go, or Rob. There we go. There we go. There we go. Um, yeah, that's that's beautiful. Yes, they all need Jesus for sure, uh, which is amazing. But I, I agree. Well, definitely, like we mentioned, it takes a lot of us just to pour into these little ones. And um, so let me ask this real quick. I love doing this every time. If you are our family of anyone on stage, uh, can you go ahead and stand up for us? Let's see the village that's kind of behind these amazing people. Kids, awesome. 
Um, if you say, you know what, I'm a, a friend of the family, I will probably end up, um, you know, being around them at functions or something. You can go ahead and stand up as well if you're friends of the family. Awesome. Um, if you plan on helping with VBS or Neo Kids at all in the future or currently, let's go ahead and stand up because there's part of the village. There it is. There it is. Well done. Well done. All right. And since we are a church body, we are all going to stand up. We're all going to pray. So let's get everybody else standing up, if you don't mind. Um, God, we uh, lift every single one of these kids up to you. What a blessing it is, Lord, to be in a church where there are kids running through the hallways and there's laughter and screaming and everything else, Lord. Uh, we thank you for that, Lord. You say that children are a blessing, and, and Lord, they truly are. And so, Lord, I pray for every parent. Give them wisdom, give them discernment, give them patience, all the things that they are going to need, Lord. But we pray over these parents as they um, will lift these kids up, Lord, and do everything they can to provide an incredible spiritual environment for them and to bring them to church and to speak truth in them, to, into them nonstop. And Lord, we pray for these little ones, Lord. We hold them high right now. We, we, we pray a, a hedge of protection around every single one of them and around every single family. Lord, allow Satan to realize that this is not his, Lord. Allow him to back off. Allow him just to go away, Lord. We hold these little ones up to you, Lord. We, we give them to you, Lord. We hold them up proud, Lord, and what a blessing they are. And may they come to that saving knowledge of yourself at an early age and understand what you did for them, Lord. So, Lord, we, this is why we are here today, Lord. And this is what we are doing in this moment. And we pray all these things in your son's name. All right, if you can stay standing, if you don't mind, all right, and you guys can head out, and um, the band's going to come back out, and we're going to continue worshiping. Um, thank you so much. I just want to say that uh, I am a living proof of the power of praying parents and of a community. Amen. Amen. Of a, let's give God some glory. Yeah. Because without my parents and their love for me, you know, especially when I got through those, um, those years later, uh, after I got out of there, 90% of control and, and time with me, I kind of went wandering in my own direction, which, uh, you know, wasn't a good direction. But my mom kept praying for me, and, and all I can say is thank you all, and thank you, God, because between the two of them, they turned my life around, and, and I feel reborn, and I came back to life.
that you've done for me. Jesus, to fully praise you, it will take all eternity. Just like Lazarus, oh, you brought me back.
out together. your name, Lord.
Lord, we lift your name high this morning. Lord, you are the King of Kings. Lord, you are greater than we can comprehend. You are bigger than we can imagine. You are more beautiful than anything in this world. Lord, you are perfect, yet you chose to love us and you chose to send your son to die for us. Lord, we thank you for all that you've done. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your forgiveness, Lord. We thank you for walking beside us and never leaving us and never failing us, Lord. We pray these things in your son's name. How's everybody doing today? Everybody good? Everybody good? Yes, yes. Thank you so much for uh, being patient this morning. I did go over a little bit, and I apologize for that. I got on a roll, and uh, yeah, I didn't even look at the clock. I just kept on going. So I turned into a line of cars down the street like three or four times, so I apologize. We uh, waited a little bit. So thank you for your patience. Uh, if it's your first time, usually you can just come right in and get a parking spot. So um, so appreciate you, of course. Uh, a few things happening real fast uh, to tell you about. Uh, students are meeting tonight, a little Super Bowl party. They're getting some inflatables. They're doing some fun stuff, pizza, everything else. So um, if you have a junior high, high school kid in your, in your house, man, get them to come out. Uh, it'll be a blast. Uh, our students have a great time. They learn about Christ. It's not all fun and games, but man, they do enjoy themselves. So praise God for them. So that's tonight. Um, let's see here, the mission trips. Um, we had a meeting last week. If you were not able to be a part of that, please let me know. I can get you some information. Um, but uh, the, both trips, the registrations are open. So if you're really feeling like God's pushing you to, to do that, man, just uh, I'd encourage you to uh, think through it, pray through it a little bit more, and then of course, uh, get registered and get signed up. So uh, small groups are also happening. Um, uh, the registration is live for that. They're starting here pretty soon. Uh, no better way to meet somebody than to study God's word together. You can come here to church for a long time and not really connect with someone, get into a small group, and then it's like, oh my goodness, we're praying, we're studying God's word together in a smaller circle. It's a whole lot easier. So um, let's see here. Also this week is Valentine's Day. Uh, you're welcome, guys. Um, so don't forget, right? Um, and of course, uh, we have a new series and we are starting it today. It's about relationships. So kind of planned out, but not really. Kind of just fell on Valentine's week. But uh, so we are in a series and I don't know about you, but I'm kind of, I'm excited about this series because um, it's something that uh, there's a lot in scripture about relationships. And so I believe that it's not off limits for the church to talk about. Um, sometimes like, oh, let's just get to church and let's just study these, you know, the attributes of God and just let's really dive in. It's like, but here's some practical like things scripture has to say about our everyday world and I encourage like I encourage you don't like don't think you know what oh I'm not in a serious relationship or oh I'm just dating or oh I've been married for 20 years I got this all figured out if you do you might want to come up here and hang out with me because uh, God bless you that'd be amazing but um, but I really do believe that there's a little bit of something in this uh, for you today and um, so I'm excited and this throughout the series wherever you're at um, so let's be honest, the love story, the ultimate love story, you watch, you know, a movie and it's just like, you know, it all comes down to, it all starts with a spark, right? It's this thing that happens. And I remember when I was young, I'm like, wait a minute. So I have to like somebody, but they also have to like me. This is complicated. Like, this is crazy. Like, it's two people coming together, both thinking each other is attractive, right? Both liking, you know, who they are as a person and wanting to be around each other uh, to the point where they finally make a commitment that they're going to do life together. It's like, that's, there's a lot to that. Um, but a lot of times it does. It starts with that, that, that spark, right? That thing, they fall in love. Um, here's the issue, though. You know, it's like you watch anything on television or you hear the ultimate love story and, oh, they lived happily ever after. But it's kind of like here's this dramatic way that this two, these two people came together. And then, you know, by the time the movie wraps up, it's like they're walking off into the sunset or driving away or whatever. And it's like, and it's like oh, so we're just supposed to believe that everything was fine after that? 
right? Like everything's good, right? Oh, they had this traumatic beginning and it brought them together and they, they're romantically in love and everything. And now they're just going to, you know, it's all good after that, right? All good. It's like, wait a minute. What happened between happily ever after and on the porch, you know, drinking lemonade together, right? And traumatic, like getting together and like dating and everything that goes into that. Like how? How do you get to the porch? How do you get to that moment in time where you can look back and you're that couple, right? That you're not disgruntled and mad at each other. You're not just functional roommates, but you actually like really, really enjoy being with each other still. Because it's one thing to be in love with each other. And that's also a verb. Like, let's be honest. Like love is like, it's more than just a simple feeling. There's more to it, right? It's like, do you actually like the person that you're married? Like, they're, they're, there's that, right? Do you actually like them? Like, are they your best friend? Anybody in the world that you can hang out with, are you choosing your wife? Are you choosing your husband, right? The one that you're with? Like, this is what I'm saying. Like, this is real stuff. And we look in Scripture, I believe that there's things that we can pull out. And there's things that we can see that I really think will help us. And so there's some other questions that we'll address, and I'll be honest with you, this is a very ADD message, like this is all over the place, all right? So just follow with me on this, all right? Because we're going to dance all over, hit a couple of passages, we're going to come back to a, a passage in the end, and so, but here's some questions that throughout this series, you know, um, is should marriage really be forever? We're going to hit that, right? Like once you get married, like th- is that really what God wants? Um, is marriage just between a man and a woman? I know our culture is all over the place on that right now, but uh, we're going to speak some truth on that. And I think we all need to hear this, just God's plan in this. Um, is it a big deal to live together before you get married? And I do believe God's word does, does have some things to say on that as well. Um, also, um, you know, marriage, is it just a piece of paper? You know, is, is sex just physical? Um, how can we do this better than, than the way we saw it modeled? Um, some of us, let's be honest, like in your home, you, you had a, a, a mom and a dad that did it proper. I mean, they did it right. Like they loved each other. At least they did in front of you. Maybe they went behind closed doors and that's where they're screaming at each other maybe. But like in front of you, like it was all good. And you're going, man, I just want to have what my mom and dad had. And some of you, right, some of us in the room, we were raised and we didn't even have a mom. We didn't have a dad in the house, right? Or you could just tell mom and dad, man, they didn't like each other. Right, they were just hanging out, right? Like they were together for you and you kind of knew it, right? Like this is, and when you're, when you're being raised in that, you're going, oh my goodness, I, I, I want more than that. I want more than that than, you know, for, for me and my spouse or the person that I marry in the future. And so we look at these things and these are some of the things that we are going to address. And, you know, let's be honest, the church, when the church gets involved in something, let's be honest, like this is, Jesus has to be in the center, like what the person that you choose is the second most important decision of your life. We're in church, so yeah, hopefully you know what the first one is. Okay, it's Jesus. Okay, all right. So let's make sure we're on the same page there. The first one is starting a relationship with Jesus. Okay, only through grace, only through Him can you get to heaven. So that's number one, starting that relationship with Christ. Number two is getting to that spot where you. Because let's be honest, it's a choice. You ever see the couple that like they get married and it's like. They just started dating, and it was kind of like, you know, it wasn't, there wasn't a ton there, but they just kept dating, and then they just kind of got engaged because, you know, that's what they were supposed to do, and then finally they got married, and you're just like, man, like, I don't know, I don't know. Like, there's a choice behind it, right? Like, you can choose to get married or not, and the person that you choose to live life with and to do life with, man, was, I'm telling you, that is one of the most important things that you will do. And let's be honest, when you look in Scripture, it's marriage isn't for every single person. I know this world's trying to paint that picture, and the reason why the world is trying to paint that picture is because the world thinks that you need something to fill your life with, right? We as Christians can look in Scripture and we realize, wait a minute, Jesus Christ has to be the number one thing you fill your life with, and then the rest of it, then the rest of it comes. This world is constantly pointing to something. So if you are going to get to a spot where you do not have the Lord in your life and the other person does not have the Lord in your life, what happens typically in a secular marriage, I'll be honest with you, people that, you know, aren't, they don't, they're not focused on the Lord, what they will do is they will come together and they're expecting for the other person to, of course, complete them. They're expecting for the other person to be a functional God in their world until, of course, there's kids, right? And then kids come along and then they're the functional God, right? And that's who we start pouring into and lifting high and making sure nobody, you know, it's like we just keep transitioning transitioning, transitioning, then it's grandkids, and then it's, you know, it's, it's craziness. When you throw God in the mix, all of a sudden, that's the mark. That's the thing. That's where we got our focus. That's what we, both of us are looking. We are trying to please Jesus, and so through trying to please Jesus, man, I'm going to do everything I can for you to help please Jesus, right? We're going in that direction together. It changes everything, everything. 
That's why we cannot take our cues from this world. We cannot. When it comes to dating, like, we, we think of this happily ever after, right? And so through dating, you know, there's a lot of happiness, let's be honest, right? But God's word never teaches that one day, right? Like, when you, as soon as you get married, because that's what we think of, right? We just think of, man, that one day we get married, I'm going to walk down that aisle, and it's going to be amazing. I'm going to see her. She's going to see me. It's going to be amazing. And, and then everything is just going to be happily ever after. Everything is just going to be good. And God does not promise this. And there's going to be times in your life where times are going to be difficult, and you've got a ride or die right beside you, and you're going, are you going to ride with me? Because this, is going to, this, bump, this ride is getting bumpy, right? This is getting crazy. This is getting insane. And maybe that person, right, that you're ride or dying with, like maybe they're the one that's causing all the issues. And you're looking at them, and you're going, oh, my goodness. And I do not know. I do not know how people without the Lord get through difficult times. Because this is what he promises. He promises to be in your relationship through the thick and the thin. That's the promise, not happiness, Hopefully you have some happy times, okay? Let's be, hopefully you go to Cedar Point, right? And hopefully you get a little grandkid someday, right? Hopefully you get like all these things that can bring some joy and happiness in your life. And I'm not saying this world is doom and gloom and because this world does give us some things where, you know, it produces those happy feelings and that's what we need. And, you know, of course, but understand at the end of the day, if you're just getting married to be happy, I'm sorry, but man, that's a train wreck waiting to happen. I'll be honest with you. So what we have to do is go, okay, we have to do this thing. We have to do this different. This has to be different. We can't do this the world's way. Watch any, like, dating show, right? I'll be honest. They're, they're like, reality shows. I, my family, we love reality stuff. And so, but it's so ridiculous because, like, this is the world's, like, idea, right? This is the world's idea. Oh, this guy shows up, and here's, like, 30 other women trying to, like, compete for his time, right? There's a new one out, like, this whole farmer. You know, like, there's a bunch of farmers now that want a wife. That's a fun one, too. Um, so there's all kinds, right? We'll look into these and just kind of see what we can learn from at some point. But, like, it's crazy, right? Because everything out of their mouth, oh, her eyes are so dreamy, or he's, oh, Oh, his hair is incredible. Or, you know, it's just like, there's got to be something more, right? There's got to be, right? There has to be something more to this. And so when we look at this world, I'll be honest with you, the world isn't real good at this. It's not real good at this. So I'll say this. Wherever you're at, you're dating, you're in a serious relationship, you're engaged, you're married, you've been married for three decades. Wherever you're at currently, maybe you just got through a difficult situation, a difficult divorce, a difficult, you just broke up with someone and you swore it off. Like, I'm not dating anybody else forever. Like, you know, maybe that's where you're at. Wherever you are at, I'm telling you right now, I'm telling you right now, in your current season, God can use you. God wants to use you where you are at. God wants to use you where you are at. That's God's hope. Right, that's God's hope. He wants that relationship with you. He wants you focused on him. Everybody else on this world comes second, right? Your spouse is number two, right? And then your kids, right? And everybody else, right? That's the order, right? God, spouse, kids, everybody else. But a lot of times we, do, we take, you know, the kids and throw them way up at the top, you know, and God's kind of down here and we get it mixed up. If we do it the proper way, God can start to use us, right, in our current situation, and it's beautiful. But I know what happens right now. I'll be honest with you. Some of, us, some of us, you're immediately going to the negative. You're immediately going to the bad. You're immediately going to the regret side of things. Because we all have baggage and we all have things that we, we, we wished we would have never gotten mixed up in. We wish we never would have dated that person. We wish that marriage would have never happened. We wish there's all these things we wish. And we have this regret and regret and regret and regret. Can we just put all that behind us, please? Right? For this series, can we just put all that behind us? Like, how about you just take that to the Lord, give it to him, and then just move forward. And if it was a situation where, man, you were not, you were, you did something you just never dreamed you would have ever done, did you make it right? Did you get it right with the people around you? Did you get it right with your significant other? Did you get it right with the Lord? Okay, if you did, guess what? All that guilt, all that stuff is just being piled on from the evil one, right? Because if he can get you to feel guilty, what are you going to do? You're going to take a seat. Right? You're going to sit down. You're not going to be in the game. You're not, going to, you're not going to be a part of what God wants for you. Man, he's sneaky. I'm telling you, that's what happens. That's what happens. If I can just get you to focus on your past, guess what? You will not look to the future. And what if God has this future for you that's like, it's amazing, right? With someone that you want to be with. Maybe God can re-spark what you are missing right now in the relationship that you have. And nine times out of ten, it's typically because there's trust issues, and then, of course, one's pulling their eyes off God. And if we can just both, if both people can just keep their eyes on the Lord, I'm telling you, it starts making things right. It starts making it right. And so I encourage you, any feelings of regret or anything in the past, just please, let's just push that back. 
But one thing we need to figure out, though, was just we need to figure out these terms. Because back in the day when I was dating, it's like, hey, you two interested in each other? Yeah, we're going out. That made total sense, right? It made total sense. Now it's, yeah, we're talking. Like, talking? What? Like, what are you talking about? Like, does that mean, like, you're actually exclusive? Like, are you romantically exclusive? Like, if you went and held somebody else's hand as a person that you were talking to, going to get upset? Like, like, right? So it gets difficult. It gets weird, right? When times go on, it's just like you're not really quite sure on what's what. So, like, when we're saying dating, just so you know, like, we're talking about an exclusive romantic relationship, right? Like, it's you and them, and it's just the two of you, right? So holding hands and all that stuff, like, it's just you and them. That's, that's the deal, right? So that's where we're going to go. So another thing that we kind of have to get to figure it out here is the purpose of dating. Uh, most of us would say um, we have an idea of what dating is all about. Um, dating is weird because, um, you know, we get the chance in this country, and there's other countries that's the same way, uh, we get the chance to choose, right? There's a lot of countries are like, no, you don't get the chance to choose. This is who you're going to date because I just traded her for like four cows and a donkey and everything else, right? And that's like, what? Like, mom, dad, like, what's going on? Like, I would have never chosen her. And yet our numbers are no better, right? They're actually worse. We get in the mix and we get emotions and feelings and we think this person, we know them, and all of a sudden we realize we don't. It's trouble. And so when you look at dating, dating really should be, like the main purpose of dating should be to find the right person for marriage. So the question remains, why, parents, are we pushing our 12 and 13-year-olds to go find somebody to date? Right? It doesn't add up. If we want it to be different, if we want our relationships to be different, if we want our relationships to be biblical, then maybe we need to do them differently. And I'm not saying being weird. I'm not saying that we need to create our own fashions and, you know, wear our own stuff and, like, be strange and just total countercultural. But there are some things that we should do different. We should look at, we should take a step back, right? We should take a step back and look at the big picture and go, okay, this doesn't make sense. Why are we doing it this way? Let's do it a different way. Some of us in our families and our lives and everything else with our teenagers, we just, this is what we're doing and this is what the world does, so let's just do this. And it's just, it doesn't add up. It doesn't add up. And so we're trying to figure this out and we're trying to understand this. And a lot of us, we have a list of the, you know, here's all the qualities. This is, the, if I'm going to date somebody, these are the qualities. And if I'm going to marry somebody in the future, and then some of you are married and you're looking back and you're like, hey, you, you, you showed you had that quality and you really didn't have that quality. And we're constantly like looking at the other person and their qualities. But what if, what if, what if, what if, what if we just step back and said, you know what, I'm going to focus, I'm going to focus on God and who I am in the Lord. And I'm going to bring to my next relationship. I'm going to bring to my current relationship a better version of me because I'm focusing on God. When two people are doing that, man, I'm telling you, they are set up for success. For success. It's going to be, that's amazing. That's, that's what we have to do, and I feel like that is what can make our relationships different than the world's relationships. And so here's some scripture. You ready for this? I'm going to jump into the book of Proverbs a little bit. We'll land in 2 Corinthians, um, and then we'll finish up in 2 Corinthians. So that's where we're going today. So if you have a copy of God's Word, or if it's on your tablet or phone or whatever it is, uh, you can open that up. Proverbs 5.18 is where we're going to go. Proverbs, I love Proverbs. There's like, man, it's just a gold mine of all, it's so good. Um, and it's all over the place. I mean, you read through it, and you're just like, man, there's so much in this. And this is wisdom, all right? So when you look in the book of Proverbs, it's not promises, okay? Because you see a lot of do this, this will happen. Do this, this will happen. It's like nine times out of ten, you do this because it's the wise thing, and this will happen. But there's always, we live in a fallen world, so there's always these external things that will take place that will ruin it, <laughs> right? So there's times where it doesn't always happen exactly the same way that we see in the book of Proverbs. But he's like, this is the wise thing to do. Stick to these sayings. You're going to be good, right? You'll be able to just stand under God's word, and you'll be able to to actually have a healthy relationship. So here's, here's just some like snippets, right? Here's some things we see. Proverbs 5.18, it says, may your fountain be blessed and may you rejoice in the wife of your youth, right? So like you can honestly like wife, husband, you know, relationship here, obviously this is one and the other. But so it's like, you look at this, God wants you to rejoice in that, that wife, that husband that you had. Like when you were younger, you had, it was before kids, it was before the craziness of life, it was before, you know, that, that workload that you had to take on, it was before all this, like, 
God's going, you know what, this is good. He's blessing us with this. He wants us to enjoy that. If you just get married, man, treasure those moments, right? Because the kids are coming, right? The kids are coming. You'll be waking up. You're going to be so tired. You're not going to know what to do. I mean, it's going to like, and then finally when those, the kids are out of the house, all of a sudden it's like this time where you can look back and go, oh my goodness, that's like, we have time again. Let's enjoy ourselves. It always amazed me like the different chapters, you know, that uh, like with our children, it was, you know, you have children, you're like, oh, my goodness, and it's difficult. And then you finally, you know, you go, you go on a vacation. All you're trying to do is keep them alive, right? You're just, you're just trying to, like, make sure they don't die, right? And then there's a moment where finally you're, like, you're sitting there and you're going, oh, my goodness, they're able to, like, swim? And, like, I, I can, like, take my eyes off of them, like, and, and not be so worried. And then you get to the spot where your kids don't need babysitters. They, they can actually babysit other kids, Right, and then they're to the spot of, of course, you know, like being able to drive, and then that unlocks all kinds of stuff. And then, of course, when they move out of the house, it's almost like going back to this verse where he says, "And rejoice the wife of your youth." It's like going back in that relationship and going, "Oh, okay, let's go have some fun." Right? You see these couples where you know they're empty nesters and they're just traveling and they're kayaking and they're doing all kinds of stuff. It's like, oh man, it's it's like the circle. You know, God's wanting us to enjoy that. He wants us to have good relationships. He doesn't want it to be just all a business transaction, right? We're just together because that's what we do, and we had kids, and we're just stuck. That's not what he wants. That's not what he wants. Proverbs 12, 4 says, A wife of noble character is her husband's crown, but a disgraceful wife is like decay in his bones. You ever been around somebody that's just, man, you, you get around them, and they just bring you down. They just bring you down. Oh, it's tough. When you marry someone like that, like you literally, it's like you don't want to, you, you don't want to go home, right? You don't want to be around the person. Well, sometimes life is tough. I'm going to be honest with you. Sometimes life is difficult and it changes people. And sometimes people go through something and, and all of a sudden, what? They don't realize it, but they start sucking the world and the life out of other people and they don't realize it. And so sometimes when we go through things, we got to be careful because guess what's going to happen between in your family and the people around you? You're going to start showing up and you're going to start realizing everybody's on pins and needles. You're going to start realizing, wait a minute, you know what? When I'm not in the mix, it seems like my family's a lot happier. What is going on? And this is the issue is that if one person is sucking in the world out of everybody else and one person is like this decay, Everybody else is going to figure out how to make sure, right, they're on pins and needles and trying to figure out how can we make sure that they're okay because we don't want them to blow up. We don't want them to get upset. We don't want them to, you know, like their temper to get out of control. And so everybody's kind of, you know, doing this and this. And what if that person, what if somebody could just like talk to that person, right? Who should that be? It should be the spouse. The kids shouldn't be having that conversation. If life has come at you that hard where things have changed that much, man, let's, it's time to do some work. It's time to get alone. It's time to talk it through. It's time to figure it out. It's time to get counseling. Time to, time to do something, right? Because, man, I'm telling you, when you got somebody in your house, it's just like decay. That's horrible. I don't know. I just like, a, I get a smell. I can smell decay, right? Like, ugh, ah, right? You don't want to be around that. It's, re, it's repulsive. It's just, it's just, you don't want to be around that. And it's like if somebody has noble character, I love this word, noble character, why is it all these shows, it's always about, you know, the appearance, the appearance, the appearance. It's like, well, we don't realize it's, it's amazing. The healthy relationships, what will happen is that spark. Oh, man, she's beautiful, right? He's so dreamy, whatever. And all of a sudden, it starts changing, right? Because the more you get to know them, and if they have noble character, all of a sudden, you're like, whoa, wait a minute. That person, man, it seems like they love the Lord. Wow. That person has integrity. That person is honest. I don't know about you, when I, when I started realizing like the character of, of my wife, Christina, when I started realizing who she really was, because there's a person that we all put on on the outside, and then you find out who they really are. And when I started finding out who she really was, it was like, oh my goodness, it, it was more attractive. Because I'm going, wow, the outside matches the inside. Like, like, this is who she truly is. And it's like, here's her character. And it's not just fake when she's like caring about somebody and trying to do something for someone. It's like, it's real. And you start seeing that and you go, oh my goodness. And that's what, all of a sudden, what, that's what allows a marriage to last to decade one, to decade two, to decade three. Because you have this moral character, this thing on the inside of you, these attributes where you're chasing God, right? And the best is coming out and other people are seeing it. Your spouse is seeing it. They're able to take advantage of that. It's amazing. It's amazing. 
And so here we go. This is another verse. It says this, better to live on the corner. Of, this, is, this is recorded twice in Proverbs. So he just didn't say this once. He said this twice. He says, better to live on a corner of a roof than to share a house with a quarrelsome wife or a quarrelsome person. Get the sleeping bag out. Get the pillow out. Go up on the roof. Climb up there and just make yourself at home because it's much better, right, than to live with. Some, but so many of us choose, right? We chose to live with someone we knew we were butting heads with constantly. We knew they had character flaws to the point where they just weren't the best to be around, but oh, you know what, I'm just going to just, okay, you know what, I just, why not, I just went with it. No, 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 that's not what God wants. That's not what God wants. Proverbs 31, 10, and 11, a wife of noble character, who can find? Here we see it again. I love Proverbs 31. Man, I love Proverbs 31. Please read this. Like, this is... Ladies, like, this is what we can aspire to. Like, men, this is what hopefully we can be as well, like, this, this, this character side. But this is who we should be looking for, right? This is it. Like, a wife of noble character who can find. She is worth far more than rubies. Her husband has full confidence her in her and lacks nothing of value. Full confidence. Full confidence. When there are struggles in a relationship... You always have to, a good counselor is always going to explore the trust side of things first. Because I'm telling you, if you can't trust your spouse, you're going to have trouble either today, tomorrow, or in 10 years. It's going to happen. It's a time bomb. It's ready to go off. Right? If you're making excuses for your spouse, that's a problem. That's a big problem. Trust is the number one thing that you have to have. Right? That's why like, trust in God is so important. Right? We, we trust God. We trust God that he is good. We trust God that he has the best for us. We trust God for our salvation. Like if we couldn't trust him, man, just throw out the Bible, throw out everything. In human relationships, it's the same, whether it's a friendship or a spouse, right? The trust has to be there. And when that trust is broken, ooh, that's trouble. That takes a while to get back. It takes a long while to get back. And if there was a lot of trust built up on the front side and when trust is broken, it's, a little bit, it's definitely a little bit easier. Right, But if there's a trust issue and a trust issue and a trust issue, hey, you said you were going here. How come? You know what? I, I jumped on Life 360. didn't seem like you were there. Where were you going? Right? Like, we shouldn't have to be jumping on our phones and figuring out where people are at. And like, it, it, No, no. Like, that's not what we should be doing. Trust is so important. Trust. You've got to have confidence in the person that you are with. And so when you look at all these and, you know, you, you go, okay, what's some good things that we can just kind of kind of get our heads around today. It's like the person that we are with, they really should, like they should bring out the best in us. And we should bring out the best in somebody else. How do we do this? Right? First one, the first way is this, is do everything you can to bring out the godliness in the people around you. Bring out the godliness in your spouse. Um, some of us, maybe you, you were dating someone or you're with someone and you're like, you know what, I'm way further ahead than they are as far as spiritually, right? I, I know a lot of the Bible. I was raised in church. They don't really know, you know, the Bible a whole lot. So, you know, it's kind of tough. But man, like, that's where you go. I don't care if you're the male or the female. I don't care who you are. Like, in the relationship, like, you figure out how can I, how can I help them spiritually? How can I bring out the best in them? How can I help them to have truth? Right? How can I, what can I do personally to do this? And I'm going to say this, and this is very true. And this isn't even like, this isn't even something that's like, oh man, I can't, you know, this is a conviction thing. This is a gray, this isn't gray. This isn't gray. If you are dating someone that doesn't love the Lord, you should not be dating them. You should not be, listen to this. I'm, this isn't me. Get mad at God, okay? Get mad at the Lord, right? Here we go. 2 Corinthians um, 6, 14. Do not be yoked together with unbelievers. For what do righteousness and wickedness have in common? Or what fellowship can light have with darkness? What harmony is there between Christ and Belial? Or what does a believer have in common with an unbeliever? You do not have anything in common. If one person is putting Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, number one in the relationship, and the other person is, does not have the Holy Spirit, guess what? One's living by the Spirit, the other one is not. And so when it comes time to get to church, when it comes time to these things of the most important foundational pieces to a relationship, you're not going to be on the same page. What does a person have in common with an unbeliever, a believer with an unbeliever? You, you, at the end of the day, you want every single important thing to be in common, right? You want these things to line up. And so parents, if your child's bringing home somebody that doesn't know the Lord and are not interested in the Lord, have a good conversation with them. Put an end to it. They're under your house, right? I understand, like, they're under your roof. They're in your house. Like, I understand that's difficult. And that's, there could be a lot of crying and issues and, you know, could cause some, you know, but... 
we have to like go, this is the standard that we are setting. Right? Why? Because dating is trying to find the right person. And if we decide, you know what, man, they, they meet every single standard except, man, they just don't really love God at all. We have to be willing to say, you know what, okay, this one's not for me. I, trust me, I get it. That's tough. If you're dating and you're trying to figure it out and you're just sick and you're like, man, there's just nobody out there, I understand, right? You're ready to just throw it up and just be done with it. And I understand and I get it. But this has to be number one. The godly side has to be number one. You ever been canoeing before? You have been canoeing? Canoeing can be fun. Can be. Can be fun, right? If you're canoeing, right, with a person that knows how to canoe, canoeing can be fun, okay? <laughs> but if you're canoeing with someone that does not know how to canoe, what happens, right? You, you just go in circles, right? You just go in circles the whole time. You run into tree branches or the thing falls over. They stand up and rock the thing, right? And like, you would swear, like, you know, like the river goes this way. We're trying to get down the river so that we can get off this thing. But it just seems like the entire time they're doing what? Nothing but fighting you, right? This is the way it is in a relationship. When you decide, you know what? I'm going to partner with somebody that doesn't really love the Lord the way I love the Lord. It's just there's going to be conflict. There's going to be difficulty. There's going to be struggles. And that's this big picture. Like I said, that's just something that's so clear in Scripture. Don't be unequally yoked. It's like an ox and they're like, they're working together and they get two ox and they, from very young, from the same, like, you know, like the same, close to the same genes, that way they're the same size and they get them young, they pair them up and that way they can just go straight as possible. All of a sudden we get, we get yoked with an unbeliever. I mean, we're all over the place and all of a sudden what our effectiveness while we're on this earth, it's not as much. We can't do what we would like for the Lord. We can't. So another thing that we can kind of see here uh, in bringing our best, I know it sounds weird, but just our purity, our pure, like purity, like promoting purity, promoting like perfection, right? Perfection. Purity, I know like the whole romantic side before you're dating, I'm just say this, you know, to me it's so obvious, but I know our world is screaming otherwise, but man, wait till you get married. I don't care if you're 25 or 30 and you're still dating, like wait till you get married. It's the best way possible. Our goal in coming into a serious, serious relationship is to try to work through the baggage that we've put on, to work through the things that, that we've acquired in life that we can't like, seem to shake. And so what do we do? We do the hard work. We talk through it. We figure it out. We take it to the Lord, right? We're going to always bring something into the, to the relationship, but God's wanting us to, what, just come with as little as possible, right? Two people that can come with as little as possible, and I'm saying, like, there's all kinds of things in our past and our childhood, and, but we can grow. We can get past things, right? We can get through things, and when we get through it, guess what? It's in the rearview mirror. It's behind us, so we're moving forward, and guess what? When you come into that relationship, man, you're healthy, the problem is with the hookup culture in our world is that this world is saying, get with anybody you want. It doesn't matter. Just have as much fun as you can. Go on spring break. Love anybody you want, right? Oh, I'm so in love. Really? On spring break? Yeah, okay. Right? And then you just do whatever you want. And then, you know, when you get to marriage, guess what? You'll be able to forget all that stuff. You'll never judge anybody. You'll never compare. No, you'll never compare. It's insane, right? This world, there has to be a different way. There has to be a different way. You know, anybody that collects any kind of, you know, like you collect car, you know, like playing cards, you, you collect like, um, you know, stamps or coins or, you know, whatever it might be. It's like, you know, you're always wanting that high grade, that closest to perfection that you possibly can. The day it was, to the day it was manufactured, the day it was created, you know, it's like you want it to be in pristine condition. Oh man, that's what we should want for our, our relationships. That's what we should want for our own personal health, Right? So what does that take? That takes guarding absolutely everything, especially when you get into a marriage. Guarding social media, making sure we're not putting anything out there. If it, the whole modesty thing is important, right? Being modest, it's like such an important thing. There's so many things that we have to just sit back and go, okay, this is, here's what we have to do. And we have to strategize and we have to figure it out. Otherwise, it'll turn into a crazy hot mess before we know it. All because we just simply did not protect this. Another thing that we need to bring to the, to the table in a relationship is focusing on people's good side. Um, every single one of us have good qualities, and every single one of us have bad qualities. Let's be, let's be real, right? Some of you have tempers. I don't. Some of you have tempers, right? And you get frustrated real quick and upset and, you know, like, but some of, some of you also have, like, this side that's so patient, right? And you have this side that's, like, endearing and, like, sympathetic, 
And if we in our relationships can focus on the good and do everything we can to like reach in and just help like bring the good out of other people, this is something that we have to do. This is something that is, of course, very important. But here's the thing, is that you have two people coming to the situation, and the biggest problem with a relationship are those two people, right? Because they're sinful, and they got issues. And here's the, th- here's the other thing, is that God absolutely created men and women different. I don't care what our culture has to say. The blurring of masculinity and fem, fem you know what I'm saying, the blurring of that, right? <laughs> Not easy to say, um, uh, but when you blur that, it just, it's a mess, Praise God, God created men, and praise God, he created women, right? That is just all there is to it. And God created men, and he created women differently. There was a study that, uh, that just happened, I just read about. They took um, 100 men, 100 women, and they took them, and they put each of them in a, a box, basically. For 30 minutes, white box, basically nothing, right? Nothing. And no talking, no anything, and you're just... You know, you're sitting there on a box, right? What would you do for 30 minutes in a box? I'd go crazy, but you're sitting there for 30 minutes, and so they'd bring them out, and they'd ask one by one, okay, hey, what was going through your head, you know? So all the men, they're asking, all the women, they're asking. So a man, not ever all of them, but a majority of the men, predominantly what they were thinking of was two things, right? Some sort of, like, physical activity, like sports, you know, something along those lines, and women. Okay, there you go. All right. And then the ladies, they were asking them what, did they, what was going through their minds. And then what was going through their minds was they were replaying conversations that they had throughout the last 24 hours. <laughs> Men and women are totally different, right? Like that's biology working at its finest. That's science, right? That's science. Like science is telling us that men and women are absolutely different. And it's crazy, like, you want to bring out the good in your partner. So, you know, it's kind of wild, but when you look at Scripture, you start seeing these differences come out, right? And what God wants out of, like, a a relationship. And I'll be honest, guys, he wants us to step up, and he wants us to lead, and he wants us to take that, that spiritual step for our family. And why wouldn't women, why would you not encourage him to do that? That's the good, right? When he's doing that, he's in God's will. He's doing that. He's bringing his kids to church. He's taking his stand. He's saying, this is what we are going to do. For me and my house, we're doing this, right? This is what we're going to do. And so all of a sudden, what? We look at one of the greatest, one of the greatest things that a woman can do. It's a superpower that only she can do is create another human being, right? It's amazing, Right? So, men, when you get into a relationship, guess what? She's going to have strong maternal feelings, right? Why would you quench those? If you're in a relationship and you're going into marriage and he doesn't want kids and you do, whoo, that should be a massive red flag, massive red flag. Man, God said be fruitful and multiply. Like, God wants us to have children, right? I mean, this is, he calls them like quivers in our, like our bows in our quiver, like arrows in our quiver. There we go. Like they are an amazing thing from the Lord. They are a blessing from, from, from God. Like we look at men and women, like we should be doing everything we can to bring out the absolute best in them. The absolute best. So another thing is just um, that we should be trying to bring out is just the healthy side. We should be focusing nonstop on the health of our relationships there's a, um, another study that I saw, and I've seen this, and it's so true. You bring a couple in, and you sit them down, and they're struggling. And there's one thing, there's one thing that you can look at and go, okay, that marriage is doomed. That marriage, no matter what they try, if they don't correct that one thing within a year, or six months, or whatever it might be, they'll be coming back in, they'll be getting a divorce. And it's, it's I know this is weird, but it's empathy, when you see a couple sitting there and they have no empathy for what the other person is going through, you know how a couple gets through an affair? It's when the person that was, you know, that didn't have the affair, they look at the other person and they can empathize for where they were at that led to it. Right? I, that's, that's touchy. That's touchy. I get it. That's difficult to get through. That's crazy to get through. But when you can start putting yourself in their shoes, when you can start going, okay, let me... You know, what's going on? When somebody looks at another person and you can see them like truly trying to understand, boom, there's a prayer for that marriage. There's a prayer for them, right? It seems that they're going to they're gonna be okay because there's this, this thing between them. 
When somebody comes in and they're just so in their own world and they're so narcissistic and it's all about them, you can totally tell the other one has just been placating the whole entire time. Whatever you want, whatever you want, and just the go person, right? They're just there to just, you know, patronize and just say anything they can to make it good. And it's like, oh, that's a mess. And some people go throughout their entire life in that way. People, I'm telling you, if you are stuck in a relationship where you've never stood up for yourself, now is the time to stand up for yourself. One of the greatest things that I realized with my wife when I was younger was that if I said something I shouldn't, she was going to snap back at me really, really quick, right? And when I met her mom, I realized, oh, she got that from her mama. All right. Like, I was like, okay. But it is. It's like, I'll say something. I'm like, oh, man, did I just overstuff? Uh-oh. Like, I might have gotten away with something, you know? But it's like, we're not always button heads, but I know in the back of my head, like, man, I... If I'm having a bad day, she'll give me a little patience, you know. But, man, if I keep going, oh, man, it's, she's going to put her foot down. That's what we need. Checks and balances within the relationship, right? Trying to figure each other out. We need empathy. We're trying to bring out a healthy relationship. That's, that's what we should want. That's what we should want. So here's some application, and I'll wrap it up at the very end, and uh, we'll be finished up. So application number one, um, if you're dating and you're in a relationship, and um, you've been dating for a little bit, I encourage you to go to somebody that has good wisdom, like someone that you respect. They've had a good relationship. Maybe it's your parents. Maybe it's somebody else. Maybe it's somebody at church, whatever it might be. And just simply ask them, hey, this relationship that I'm in, how, is this good? Do you see this as healthy? And if they're honest, right, you're going to get two responses. Oh, girl, you should have been done with him a long time ago, right? Like, that's, that's possibly one of them, right? It's possibly one of them. Or, oh, you two, man, there's something about this. Like, we all talk behind your back how great you guys are together. You guys, just, you guys are amazing. You guys are amazing. Like, whatever you guys are doing, keep doing that. It's the Lord, right? The Lord, that's the thing that's in them. That's what shines through, right? The Lord is what shines through in that situation. But I encourage you to get some feedback on your relationship. Get some feedback on the person. Now, you're not trying to, you know, get people to gossip and, you know, to throw out shade or nothing like that, but you just want some, you know, you just want some, you know, let's have some conversations and see, you know, does everybody agree? I mean, you think he's great. Does everybody else? That's, it's good, right? It's good when other people are able to pour into it. Your mom or dad will fall over if you ask them, right? Like, you really want dating advice from me? Like, it's, it's a good thing, though, to get, of course, those that have gone ahead of us, their thoughts and opinions. Uh, the second thing, if you're dating and you're not really sure if you're talking or what you're doing, like, I encourage you this week to figure out what that is, right? Are you exclusive or are you not? Because if you've been going out with somebody, dating, talking to somebody for a while, right? Like there's a point where you need to be exclusive. Otherwise, you're just kind of the side, you know, project and that's just not good, right? So get out of that as quick as you possibly can. Determine the relationship. I'm telling you, just tell them, hey, my pastor made me do this, okay? <laughs> like just throw me under the bus. I don't care, right? Figure it out, figure it out because you don't want to waste your time. Right? You don't want to waste your time. That's not what you want to do. Um, another thing is just that um, I don't care if you're 15 or 50 or single. Um, this is a good one. This is a good one. Um, if you're stressing out about, you know, Mr. Wright, Mrs. Wright, whoever, if you're stressing out about trying to find the right person and all that, it's just, oh, it's wearing on you. Man, take a break. Just take a break. If you got like five different profiles going on five different apps trying to find, so like, just take a break. Whether that's two months or six months or a year, whatever it is, like, just take it to the Lord. This is where you got to step back and go, Lord, I don't know what's going on here. I'm a great person. I'm a great catch, right? Tell the Lord that, right? Like, but, like, but just realize, just, you know, like, you, you need a break because it seems like you're really trying to push when God's saying, you know what? I need you to focus on me for a bit, right? Focus on me. Be Mr. or Mrs. Right, right, with me first. And then, you know what? We can see about what, what's to come, and be at peace. Be at peace with that because you look at like, the Apostle Paul. It was clear with him like, that marriage isn't for every single person. He's like, I was able to get a whole lot more done right, because I wasn't married. I know that's crazy to think through, but understand, of course, marriage is definitely a gift as well. Um, number four, if you're a parent, man, resist programming your kid to prioritize dating. Seriously. Like, if you're a parent, like, stop shoving it in your kid's face. They'll, man, when they find the right person, guess what? It'll be amazing. If they're, if they're, not, if they're not, like, going out with someone and their, their world is consistent of people that don't have the same values as them, praise Jesus, right? Seriously, your kid is making a good choice by not dating somebody, 
Nothing worse than when your kid brings home the wrong person and you're going, oh no, right? How do I get rid of this kid, <laughs> right? Like every dad's like, oh, you know, like, man, I'm telling you, you want your kid bringing home the right person. So how about we don't shove it upon our 12-year-olds that you have to have a boyfriend or a girlfriend? It doesn't add up. It doesn't make sense. And finally, if you're married, just keep on coming back to this series, okay? Because you're going to keep getting more and more and more, all right? So that's the application. So how do we do it different? I think 2 Corinthians 6, if we keep reading this passage, and I'll be finished up with this. Um, if we keep reading this passage, I think um, we can figure out how to do this a little bit different. You ready for this? Um, he goes on. So he just went through the don't be unequally yoked. Unbeliever, believer, what do we have in common? We are to be in the world but not of the world, right? We are to not just completely cut ourselves off from the world. But our deep, serious relationships, like they need to be, it needs to be a believer. And so he says all that, then he says, what agreement is there between the temple and God, of God and idols? For we are the temple of the living God, as God has said already. He, like, he already told us this, right? He's like, you're the temple of the Lord. Like when Christ, when, when you start a relationship with Jesus Christ, you, the Holy Spirit is locked up in you. He's with you. You are the temple of God. Like, Yes, we go to church. We are the church, right? We're the temple. So we bring into a room something a little bit different than the average person. And so we need to start looking for something different than what this world looks for. He goes on, he says this, I will live with them and walk among them and I will be their God and they will be my people. Therefore, therefore, like now, right? Come out from them and be separate, says the Lord. Touch no unclean thing, and I will receive you. And I will be a father to you, and you will be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. Come out from them and be separate. Be different. Be different. Oh, man, you're 25, and you haven't slept with anybody? What's wrong with you? Are you crazy? No, I'm, I'm just, I'm being different. What's wrong with you? You can't find somebody? You went to college, you went all the but you can't find anybody? What's wrong? No, 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 I'm just, I'm waiting. I could have dated like 10 different people in college, whatever. No, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm doing this different. Let's go to spring break, man. We're going to party. We're going to just, we would do all kinds. No, 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 no. I'm going to be, I'm going to be different. It's going to be different. Man, your marriage, like, man, that seems like, oh, you need to just be done. Like, no, 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 no. I'm going to, I'm going to work through this. I don't care the struggles that I have. I'm going to work through this. I'm going to try to do what I can. I'm going to do everything that I can to be godly. I'm going to make good decisions. I'm gonna bring her or him along. Man, it's gotta be different. It's gotta be different. So I encourage you today, are we different? We just like this world. Hopefully you have the Holy Spirit. Hopefully you have the Lord. Hopefully you've gotten to that moment in time. Hopefully your spouse has. Maybe you're sitting here and you're with your spouse and you're not quite sure. And I encourage you one more application step is go home and have that conversation. Go home and talk that through because that's the most important conversation you can possibly have if you've never had a godly conversation before. Let's, uh, let's bow our heads. God, we thank you so much. Oh, you give us so many good things, Lord. You give us so many good things. But Lord, one thing that we know is that uh, you love us and care about us no matter where we're at. The things that we've done wrong, the things that, that are stupid, our past, Lord, the things that we regret, the relationships that we've had that we should have never had, Lord, the people that we've dated that we had no business dating, Lord, thank you for, oh, Lord, thank you for forgiveness. Thank you for redeeming us, Lord, for allowing us to understand what grace really is. So, Lord, I just pray that we can get through our baggage and get through the things that we have in our past. Lord, the things that we've, the, the decisions that we made, Lord, that we should have never made. I just pray that we can get through all that and that we can look towards you, Lord, and that we can focus on you, Lord, because you're a God that runs after us, Lord. You're a God that cares about us. You're a God that worries about us. And we get up in the morning and it's, Lord, it's just an amazing thing. We look in scripture and we see that every single day you pursue us, Lord. And so, Lord, may we pursue you with that kind of effort, Lord. And Lord, may that just result in just amazing relationships in our world. Friendships, people that we're dating, Lord. Of course, you know, those that we have married. 
Lord, may we pull out the best in them. May they pull out the best in us, Lord, because we are focused on you because of ultimately what you did for every single one of us. Lord, thank you for dying on a cross. And Lord, I just pray for the person here today as we always do, maybe someone here, Lord, it's time. Lord, it's time for them. They're at that spot where they just, man, they just, they gotta give in. And Lord, maybe they're living a lifestyle that's just, they know they need to start changing, Lord. So I, my prayer today is that we would be willing, Lord, to change be willing to do it differently, separately, Lord, a a different way, your way, Lord. So, Lord, that is the prayer today. Lord, help us to honor you. Lord, our time that we have here on this earth is not forever. We know that, Lord. Every day is a gift, Lord. Every day is a gift from you, Lord. And my prayer is that you would just allow us to, man, bring your kingdom here, Lord. Your kingdom come, your will be done, Lord. The things that we do on this earth, I just pray that we just honor you, Lord. So may we honor you with our relationships. May we honor you with our bodies, Lord. May we honor you with our our actions, our deeds, our words, Lord, the different things that we do, thoughts. Lord, may we honor you. We love you, Jesus, so much. I pray these things in your name. Let's stand and worship him one more time. When I was your foe, still your love.
There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. God that chases us down every single day. What a blessing that is. A God that cares about us, loves us, wants the best for us. He wants good relationships, good healthy relationships in our families, in our marriages. That's the God that we serve. He gives us advice, and so I encourage us this week, man, go home and dig in, talk to God, have that conversation. God will give you what you need to do with your relationships. He'll put it on your heart if you pursue Him in that. If you have something that you want to pray through, we have a prayer team that's going to come down after we get done, and Man, if God's put something on your heart, you know you need to take a next step and you just want to pray through that. Maybe you just need to talk to somebody. We encourage you just to extend this service, right, during that time and just come and just give that to the Lord after the service is over. God, we love you so much, Lord. We're your children. Lord, we're trying to do what's right, Lord. We're trying to just navigate this crazy world and the relationships that we have in it. And I just pray that we can honor you, Lord. But we thank you that you love us so much that you chase us down, Lord. We thank you that you, you won't stop every single day. Your mercies are new, Lord. We thank you that you love us and care about us no matter what, Lord. But we pray that we can honor you through the things that we do here, Lord. So Lord, help us to go this week and do our very best. Help us to go this week and just have a, a newness to our, our relationships, a newness to our marriages, Lord, that we can look back and say that was because of you. Lord, that is our hope. We love you, Jesus, so much.